of sin, the cause to choose him over sin, and the assurance of his mercy when we stumble. So first, let us begin by acknowledging the immense value each of us holds in God's As you heard in today's gospel, the disciples were disturbed because someone outside of their group was casting out demons in Jesus' name. So what was the problem? Well, Jesus reassures them, saying, don't stop that man. 
He goes, anyone who performs mighty deeds in my name will not also turn around and say negative things about me. So here, I believe that Jesus is teaching a profound truth to the disciples, but to us today. That God's grace is not just for a selected few. His love and his power extend to all who seek him, regardless of who they are, what they look like, or where they come from. Every person, regardless of status or background, is precious in the eyes of God. I believe our world needs to hear that message. This truth is also echoed in the first reading from Numbers. Feeling overwhelmed by the burden of leadership, Moses asks God for help. Again, feeling overwhelmed by leadership, Moses needed some help, and he asked the Lord. God responds by sharing the spirit that was on Moses to 70 other people, to 70 elders. And then even two men who were not present also received the spirit, and those two men also began to prophesy. Hey, what was the problem? Well, Joshua, Moses' aide, expressed his concern that these two men were also prophesying. Moses says there's no problem, no need to be jealous. Instead, Moses said, wouldn't it be great if all of God's people were prophets? So what do we learn from Jesus and from Moses here? Again, God's love and mercy and power is, are expansive. He desires to pour out his spirit on everyone. Everyone here, everyone. Why? Because he infinitely values every person. every person and he values every person but this leads me to the second lesson today the reality of sin you all probably were thinking well I get your first lesson deacon but you want to talk about sin yes we have to talk about sin so while God values each of us he does not want us to overlook the reality of sin. Now you can look around our world today and you can see the impact of sin. You can watch the news every night and you can see the impact of sin. So sin is not just an abstract idea. It separates us from God it damages our relationships with one another. It damages our families. It damages marriages. So in the gospel today, Jesus uses vivid images to emphasize the seriousness of sin. For example, he says, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off instead of going to the unquenchable fire of Gehenna. I'm sure this got his heroes, I'm sure it got their attention. Now, in truth, these words may seem harsh, but they serve as a stark reminder of the destruction.
destructiveness of sin. Sin pulls us from God. It pulls us from the love that he has for us. In the second reading today, James warns us about the consequences of sin. He says, read, selfishness, oppression, can all lead to spiritual ruin. Sin takes root when we give in to our selfish desires and when we lose sight of God's will for our lives. It grows inside of us when we allow worldly temptations to overshadow our relationship with God. However, we're not left to fight sin on our own. And that leads me to the next point, choosing God over sin. God calls us to choose him over sin, and he gives us the grace to make that choice. And let's remember Jesus, for example. He faced temptation throughout his life. He was fully God, but yes, he was fully human. He always chose the will of the Father over the lure of sin. His example shows us that with God's grace, we too can resist the pull of sin and remain faithful to his call. We also have the example of Our Lady. She said yes to God's plan of salvation and to God's plan really for her. And she followed it perfectly. Now in our church, we also have the example of the saints. St. Augustine, read about his life and his mother, St. Monica, and what he did and what he ultimately did when he answered God's call. St. Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of the Jesuits, long journey to the Lord, but he ultimately followed the Lord's call. Mother Teresa, saint that, a modern saint that we all love and adore. Decades of not feeling close to the Lord, but what did she do? She continued to do his will. And she had a gift that I wish I had. She saw the face of the Lord in everyone, including those people in the slums had nothing in India. Saint Pope John Paul II, Polish people and really the world have so much to be thankful for his example. These examples, Jesus, Our Lady, the saints, can guide us to embrace what is good and reject what leads us away from God's plan for us. But let's be real. I'm sure you, you all are thinking. This is not always easy. It is not always easy. But God provides the strength and guidance we need to choose his way over the empty promises of sin. And this leads me to the last point. Trusting in God's mercy. Even though we strive, or we should strive, to always choose God, to always choose what is right, then let's be honest, sometimes we don't. We all, we all stumble, fall short of God's glory in our own lives. And when, it's not if, but when we do, here's the beauty. God does not turn away from us. Instead, he invites us to turn to him for forgiveness 
and healing. You know, the sacrament of reconciliation is a gift from God. In our moments of weakness, when sin seems overwhelming, we can count on God's remarkable mercy. He does not look down on us whom he values with judgment, but instead with compassion, ready to lift us up when we fall and welcome us back when we wander off. Yes, sin is real, but God's grace is more powerful than sin. So as I conclude today, let us leave from here today and go out into the world knowing for sure that God values us immensely, far more than we can imagine. Let us not ignore the traps and the reality of sin, but instead let us open our hearts to him so that we can have the strength to choose him over sin. And finally and importantly, let us not live as a people burdened by guilt or fear when we do sin, but rather let us live as children of God, confident in his love, trusting in his mercy, and eager to live as he calls us to live. So this week, my brothers and sisters, let us open our hearts to him, knowing that his amazing grace is always available to us. Amen?